Welcome to this edition of Investment Insights. Today, we have Paddy Brown with us. Welcome, Paddy. Thanks, Tariana. We are continuing to feel the pressure of inflation here in New Zealand, with the official cash rate at a record high and interest rates continually increasing. How has this impacted investors? The Reserve Bank of New Zealand surprised the market with half a percent increase on the 5th of April, double the increase anticipated by the markets. Despite the large hike, there is no change to the projection of a 5.5% peak official cash rate. It is of note that other central banks in other countries are taking a more dovish approach to inflation, with the Reserve Bank of Australia pausing at 3.75%. There are three key reasons for the larger than expected Reserve Bank of New Zealand increase. Number one, the rebuild from major weather events, including Cyclone Gabrielle and the Auckland flooding, expected to lead to larger than expected inflation. Secondly, we're in election year and there's a likelihood of fiscal policy in the upcoming budget, bringing further inflationary pressure. And there are signs that mortgage rates are starting to fall, which essentially undoes some of the Reserve Bank's inflation tightening work. Rising rates negatively impact bond prices. Rising rates also tend to have a negative impact on equities as companies' borrowing costs increase. It is a positive though for those with cash in the bank. The OCR is now at the highest level since 2008, but we've historically seen some much higher levels with the OCR reaching 8.25% just prior to the global financial crisis in 2008. The Upper North Island floods and Cyclone Gabriel has caused devastation to local communities and regional economies across the North Island. What is the likely impact in regards to inflation in New Zealand? And does this affect the outlook for the OCR? Cyclone Gabriel has caused significant damage to homes, infrastructure and livelihoods across northern and eastern regions of the North Island. The cyclone is New Zealand's costliest non-earthquake natural disaster. The disruption and losses will weigh on New Zealand's March quarter GDP, which may have contracted. However, the New Zealand economy remains very much open for business, with cyclone damage and disruption isolated to specific regions. Looking ahead, the recovery and rebuild work is expected to add growth in the coming quarters. Tentative estimates by the Reserve Bank of New Zealand sees recovery adding 1% to New Zealand's GDP over coming years. On the 5th of April, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand stated that over the medium term, the inflationary impacts of these events are likely to be somewhat larger than assumed at the time of the February statement, as more information has come to light about the scale and of the rebuild activity. The impact this had on the OCR largely influenced the half of a percent we have just saw. There was no change to the 5.5% forecast, but that will be data dependent. The banking sector has been experiencing trouble recently. How has this affected global investment markets and should we be concerned for the local banking sector? The recent failure of Silicon Valley Bank and rescue of Credit Suisse have titled, tightened global financial conditions and reduced the need for monetary policy to be as restrictive. To date, policymakers' swift reactions have contained the crisis and we haven't seen broader contagion. As a small open economy with heavy reliance on global investors to fund our current account deficit, New Zealand has a high sensitivity to the health of the global economy and international financial markets. International shocks impact New Zealand via three key channels. Reductions in trade via lower global growth, tighter financial markets and uncertainty, which reduces business investment and household consumption. The New Zealand banking system is dominated by the big four Australian banks, who collectively have over 85% market share. These four banks all have high credit ranges by international standards, although we are closely watching bank exposures to the declining household markets on both sides of the Tasman. Looking forward into 2023, what are some of the key themes we can expect to see in the markets? We see challenges for markets persisting throughout 2023 and likely into 2024. Markets are eagerly looking for signs that when, of when inflation may fall, allowing interest rates to decline again, and this is likely to result in continued market volatility as the markets digest new information. Higher rates globally are exasperating pressures on weak businesses, as we have seen with the recent banking crisis, as well as fueling unrest and geopolitical tension. Inflation remains stubborn, and in New Zealand's a tight labour market, combined with high levels of government spending, will likely see inflation remain high in the near term, despite a declining economy. On the positive side, Many commentators believe that rates are close to their peak for this cycle and that we are seeing increased migration to assist with our chronic skills shortages. 